So good evening, uh, brother and sister, and everyone. It is so happy to see you after three, four years. Uh, I think we all survived through COVID-19, yeah? <laughs> I think after COVID-19, we don't you feel like a little bit different? It's uh, kind of uh, the way how we live. I think I feel so much different because I appreciate the everyday's life, regardless whether it's happy, unhappy, or whether it's a good or a bad day, I still, you know, I appreciate it as a being alive. So, yeah, please. Uh, uh, 那因為疫情的關係,所以他暫時就在那段時間過來,所以他是想大家問跟大家問候,那他說經過了這個疫情呢,大家都有福報還會再見面,當然對他而言這個整個生命觀,他就就有一點改變了,就是不是像以前這
We can go back to a very basic meditation, so-called Shine or the uh, Shamada meditation. So maybe some of you uh, who are new to Buddhist, uh, Buddhism, maybe you have no idea what is the basic meditation. So let me just guide you. Uh, through a very simple meditation, which you can do every day, you know, even in your office, or even in, a, in a, you are resting in your car, or even in an airplane, wherever you go, you don't really need to sit on the cushion or just sit in front of the very, uh, you know, like a fancy temple. So there are various, you know, uh, ways to do a meditation, even just a basic meditation, so-called shamatha. So I will just, you know, share with you and how I do. So first, once you decided to do a meditation, so first, once you decide, and then the first thing what you need to do is that you know try your best to sit straight. This is very important at the position, like yeah, especially yeah. our back one, you know, the, the spinal. And then you completely drop. You know, don't hold any attention uh, or like uh, tension on any part of your body. Once you sit, just drop, like completely relax, as if you were just you know, uh, lying on a bed, but you are not lying on the bed, actually. Try not to put any effort to kind of like uh, hold your, you know, body in certain, you know, a position. Just try to you know, concentrate on you know, a steady, a sitting straight and then just drop everything, just relax. Okay, try it now, yeah? Okay. Then slowly close your eyes. And then now 
you don't just live in a very vague, you know, uh, confusing zone. Just try to bring your attention toward your breathing. You don't need to breathe so hard, like breathe in and out. Just breathe it as very natural mode. Now you need to tell, you need to remind, or you have to be, you need to use mindfulness as a tool to watch on your attention. Like when you are breathing out, you must count breathing out. Breathing in, you just follow your breathing in and try not to make any mistake and try to stay in that particular you know, moment. And during this period of time, and you may have a lot of thoughts may you know come in, but it is good let it come, but don't let your thoughts to drag you out of where you're supposed to be, you know uh, in and where your your attention is supposed to be. 啊，在这个观呼吸的当中，你肯定或者会有一些念头会忽然间闪过，啊，就保持啊平常的心，啊，你就不去注意它，就让它闪过，就把你的觉知放在呼吸上就好了。Now I will give you a very simple example. Uh, try to feel yourself as a, a beautiful flower that is, you know, rooted in the ground. So of course there's a lot of butterflies and bees which will come to land on you and also extract some essence or play on a on a flower and it will fly out again it will come and land whatever it happens just let it land let it go let it land let it go so you just try to be a flower Okay, let's do that for maybe two to three minutes.
naturally open your eyes. <coughs> And then you just relax and you know try to be in a very spontaneous uh, natural state of mind for a few seconds or a minute. And then you do chanting or whatever you like to do. Or you continue to work in your office desk, you can just continue. This will help you really help you refresh your mind and also reduce some sense of uh, kind of stress. Yeah. So now let's talk about the Guru Rinpoche's uh, life story. So the Guru Rinpoche, in general, Guru Rinpoche is a, is a founder of Tibetan Buddhism. Uh, yeah, so this part of the story, in, in the Tibetan part, the story will come maybe in the, maybe late, the day after tomorrow or the after, we will talk. So first we just begin by where Guru Bhutsa was born and how he was, uh, you know, exists in this world. The Guru Bhutsa's life story is very profound and very vast. I think actually it might take like weeks or months to, you know, tell the story of Guru Rinpoche. There are like hundreds of volumes of uh, the teachings that were taught by Guru Rinpoche. Every text or every part of teaching is related to Guru Rinpoche's story. So I think it is really a lot, but we can try to you know understand the basic uh, uh, story of Guru Rinpoche's life. Now, Guru Mushi life is very interesting. Uh, it, is, it is unlike uh, Shakyamuni Buddha's life story. Although Guru Rinpoche is an um, emanation or the manifestation of Shakyamuni Buddha, uh, both of them have a two different personality if we look at it from the, our human perspective. Somehow the impression is still present. Uh, it is if it is the today's world, Shayamuni is more like uh, Thai or Chinese Buddhist type of, you know, the monk. It's very simple and uh, kind of a very compassionate look, and everything is so pleasant. Whereas Guru Mucha is very much like a Tibetan master too. I think it's a little bit um, kind of like a, a different personality, I would say. Uh, Guru Rinpoche 
is present as kind of a very heroic sort of a present. Guru Mahesh just exists with the heroic and uh, a presence, a personality in in every aspect of his life. It's so different. So, Guru Mache actually was born in this world with three vision, with three purpose. So now the story begins. So there was a, a king, very compassionate uh, a king called Indrabuti in uh, ancient city called Utian city. So in Tibetan we call it Dongkir Zedin. So that city is a very beautiful city. I think if it is present day, it is somewhere in between Pakistan and Afghanistan's area. Which I'm very much looking forward to visit this place, but so far never happened. <laughs> And I wanted to go, and some people say, don't go, it's very dangerous, there's a lot of shooting and blah, blah, blah in Afghanistan. Again, and I just changed my mind. I think maybe in the next couple of years I'm going to visit anyway. So this king was having a very hard time because he did not have a son, you know, prince. In order to rule the country under his kingship, he needs princess, you know, prince, right? So he had many wives, but somehow, in some reason, or maybe, you know, uh, you know maybe he's very um, kind of like karma, it was very hard for him to have a son. Uh 
So he was making, you know, uh, he was visiting a lot of scholars and uh, uh, fortune teller and uh, astrologers and ancient astrologers you know, who tell us about the life and the, the, you know, the result of life and blah, blah. So he visited and consulted with all of them. And then somehow uh, he also made a lot of uh, prayer and offering to the three jewels and all kinds of like that. <coughs> so now this life story again kind of uh, sometimes that sometimes Guru Mujer life looks very realistic. But at some point, all of a sudden, again, it's like uh, more like a uh, myth, you know, it's very not realistic. So now again, uh, because this part is to connect with the Buddha Mithava. <laughs> So at that time when Bodhisattva, I mean this king was also not an ordinary uh, human being from the Buddhist point of view. He was a very extraordinary uh, Bodhisattva in the body. So our look at the Shwara, we call it Genesis. Uh, realized or he knew that the king Interbuddhi was having a very hard time in Udiana without having a uh, prince. Then our Lokadishwara, uh, Buddha of Compassion, talked to his teacher. So you know who his teacher is the red man, fireman, is a Buddha Mitabha. <laughs> So, uh, then Buddha Amitabha you know, manifest Guru Rinpoche in this world for the three different purposes. So first is to fulfill the King Indra Buddhist uh, desire or the wish. Second purpose or the vision or the mission is to tame the uh, very like uh, devils and um, and very bad spirits or kind of uh, we call it raksha uh, in this world so in order to tame them or in order to subjugate them uh, he has to born with you know not through uh, uh, mother's womb he has to get a uh, burn from uh, we call it uh, uh, means miraculous birth, or another word maybe stentaneous uh, birth, which has no father and no mother I mean, biologically. So he just born uh, with some sort of like a, a very a miraculous, uh, you know, uh, activities uh, through this kind of uh, birth. Now, uh, 
，莲花生大师的这个第二个愿望呢，要满足的就是他必须要呃，就是降服呃一切的这些外魔邪道。那他本身呢，要有，他本身就是呃，本身的一个出生，他不不是通过一个平常的像。母胎这样的一个受孕，呃呃呃出生的，呃，他是通过一个非常呃呃神话的一个呃传呃传奇而出生的一个化身的。So, I think this is、uh, it makes sense in some extent because Guru Murthy have. You know, repeatedly said in many tantras in in his teachings that there are a lot of、uh, you know, many other、uh, planets beside our we call it Fozabuli, our you know this、uh, planet, our human planet, and those planets has a different species there, which is kind of alien, yeah. So some of them can be a very very a bad and a ferocious. And they are like very aggressive. And Guru Mache, you know, now we believe that Guru Mache, you know, went to another planet in order to protect the beings in this part of the world. So Guru Mache actually did not die. So for us, we still believe that Guru Mache is alive. Uh, uh, this is very. 是呃有根据呃非常逻辑的一个呃讲法，也可以说是一个实际的一个想法，就是说，呃莲花生大师，因为他曾经在他的经典也有呃叙述过说，其实嗯、呃、这些外道哦、呃，就是这些魔鬼啊，啊、呃、他他们就是会画到其他他方的一个呃世界。啊，成为一个魔鬼。那在这些呃不同的其他的这个世界里面呢，那呃，莲花生大师呢，他有这样的一个愿望呢，就是要以一种呃一种这个形态呢，去呃降服这些呃这些恶魔。所以呢，他会有一这样的一个化身的一个。So I think、uh, actually Guru Mukti is a protector for the world, today's world, especially this degeneration's world, a degenerated age, and with this very complex. And dangerous world. 那其实呃，莲花生大师也是呃，就是一个大护法哦，他也是保护这个佛法的一个，尤其在这个末法时代呢，就是要保护这个佛法，让他能久住哦，不要这样的一个灭亡。The reason why a lot of Tibetan teachers are emphasizing on a Guru Mukti. And taking Guru Mukti as very important figure in their practice, and especially in this,、uh, you know,、uh, comp- you know, uh, current uh, uh, days, is because Guru Mukti himself said, and also Buddha Shakyamuni also, you know, have said before he passed away, that Guru Mukti is actually,、uh, you know, much. Closer to our present beings than the Shakyamuni Buddha and other Buddhas, because his purpose to you know come to this world is to、uh, help and protect for our this degenerative you know、uh, you know the age、uh, activities and also the beings that are born in this、uh, you know、uh, complex world. So. He's also、uh, we believe that he's still alive. So when we pray to him, by actually, you know,、uh, in a way, when we receive a blessings, I think it is much quicker than many other Buddhas. Is because 
or his purpose. So this is the reason why they, you know, all the teachers are really emphasizing on the practice of Guru Muchi. Now, uh, uh,他们都非常的,呃,注重在这个莲花生大师的一个修辞的一个以莲花生,呃,为本尊的一个修法。那,呃,释迦牟尼佛也曾经讲过,说,呃,莲花生大师呢,是在,呃,这个末法时境
，那呃，那个西藏王呢，他邀请这个呃一个非常有名的这个班子达啊，山德拉西达，呃，我一时忘记他的嗯中文名，那但是这个班子达就是一个非常有学问的人，他。就是要引请他呢过来这个西藏啊传授佛法，因为当时候呢在西藏早期他们没有这个真正的佛法啊传到西藏之前，他们遇到了非常多的一些障碍，因为呃这个西藏王他看到当时的这个西藏他是以这个呃本土教哦、啊、本土教他们叫崩崩教。那这个崩教呢，它非常多的一些呃，就像外道一样，但是呢，这些外道它非常凶狠，然后他们就非常的呃，会杀，就是随意的杀害这些呃呃众生啊，然后呃动物啊、人啊，然后会祭祀这些鬼神啊这之类的，那这非常的恐怖。但是西藏王看到这样的一个情况，他非常。想要改变这样的一个情况，就引起了这样的班智塔，也希望通过莲花生大师呢这样的一个呃这个威德呢，他希望呃去降服这样的一个外道，啊，通过莲花生大师的呃加持。With three with these three mission, so Buddha Amitabha decided to manifest Guru Mahesh to this world. 那呃，因为有这样的一个三个这样的一个愿望呢，那阿弥陀佛呢就决定化身为这个呃，就是莲花生，以这个莲花生大师的一个形象，然后化现啊，给呃，就是呃，亲近这样的一个呃大众。So one day, King i n d a b u d h i again, he made a lot of offerings and he made a lot of prayers,、uh, especially you know seeking. Uh, you know,、uh, for the prince, and then he went to sleep uh, after his prayer. 那就呃，就谈到这个呃，印度国王这个 King Budi 呢，那当时候他就是想呃，要呃呃，降服这样呃，要要。有这样的一个呃心，要得到这个儿子，然后他就在睡睡午觉的时候。So in his dream, maybe it was uh, uh, certainly it was a manifestation or the、uh, kind of a, a message from the Buddha Mitava. Someone in his dream told him to give, you know,、uh, whatever he possessed. To all the you know、uh, beggars and people who need, so he had to act as a kind of a great generosity towards the the poor people and all the beggars in Odiana. 那当时候他的王在睡午觉的时候，他就做了一个梦，那就有这样的一个使者传递啊，弥陀佛的一个呃。呃，话给他，就是有人就告诉他说，呃，你你必须要啊、呃，把你所拥有的一切啊、呃，然后捐，呃，就是把它捐出来啊、呃，给所有的贫困的一些呃呃人民。嗯。Then he gave, you know, from his treasury store, he gave everything to the, all the beggars and everything, and.、Uh, You know his treasure box and storage, you know, rooms are almost getting empty. 那国王就遵照这样的一个哦意呃梦示呢，他就把所有他拥有的一切，啊，就所有的都布施出来了，啊，给所有贫苦贫穷的人。And what happened was one day it really become empty, so king become very poor now. 那他真的把所有的一切就布施出去了。那他现在这个国王已经变成很穷了，贫穷了。Because he trusts his dream。那他是依照他的梦境哦这样去做，而且他对这个梦境非常有信心。And the reputation of his generosity spread toward his neighboring countries as well
。那因为他这样的一个故事呢，就呃，这个消息就传到他呃四周围的所有的呃国家。So what happened was, even you know the beggars from the neighbor countries also came to his country, and it was crowded. You know, in his country, and all like the the eight direction of his palace were like filled up by the beggars, but he had nothing to give. Everything has given. That this news came out to all the neighbors, all the countries. That felt, suffered, all the these beggars, or the beggars, all 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 the beggars. 他的八个四周围所有都塞满了人，但是他没有什么东西可以布施了。He gave everything because he thought that he could have a prince if he gave everything. So he accumulated more marriage, and then he could have a prince. But still, he did not have it. 那他以为说，呃，就是布施了，他就会得到他的一个儿子。啊，那但是他已经布施了，但是这个这个儿子没有出现。But he never gave up. The good thing is he never gave up. He still wish and continue to act a generosity towards the, you know poor people until he have you know uh, his prince. So King was thinking, what should I do now? You know, a lot of people are around here, and I have nothing to give. Everything is given, and I still do not have my child. Wow! So King was having a very hard time, but all of a sudden he had this thought. You know. And very far from where he lived, there is uh, the daughter of Naka was living there. So the Naga, you know, the daughter of Naga has a kind of wish fulfilling jewel. If he get wish fulfilling jewel, whatever he, you know, pray, whatever he say to this wish fulfilling jewel, it's more like a fairy tale sometimes. It sounds like, but it's very interesting, and uh, you know, your wish will be filled. You know, uh, you know, maybe like immediately. 那这个呃，龙王的女儿呢，呃，就是呃，就是为了要帮他实现这个愿望呢，也、呃、就送他了一一颗这个呃珠宝哦、呃，这个非常珍贵的珠宝，这个是满月的珠宝。那呃，无论他要求什么呢，这个这个珠宝就会满他的月。Again. In order to have that, or to meet this, uh, the prince of a daughter of a naga, you have to go through a lot of hardship. It's a very long distance. You have to go through so many dangerous and risky paths to pass. And his minister and his family and his, you know, the uh, the public in Odiana did not want King to leave the palace because they don't want to lose. Their king on the way to that Naga's palace. 那在还没遇到这个龙王女儿的之前呢，其实呃，国王他是经历了一段非常艰苦的一个过程，哦，因为他呃宫中的这些大臣，哦，还有他的家人呢，都劝他，哦，因为这条路不是容易呃走的，他必须要经过非常多的磨练。So he asked his minister and his attendants to prepare the ship. You know, those days you do not have a car and plane, so you have to go through ship. 
So he asked them to prepare the ship and they managed to uh, prepare a ship and then he went to this place. So finally he reached the the palace of this Naga's daughter after you know uh, getting through all this hardship and very uh, risky path. Then, you know, the daughter of Naga said to uh, King Indrapudi, and you must be the, the merit of man, you know, meaning that there's someone who has a great merit. Because a lot of people try to reach me here, and nobody really, uh, you know, make it successfully. So you, you know, came here successfully. That means you have a lot of merit. So what do you want? So King Indrabodhi said to the daughter of Naga, I want and I wish to have a wish fulfilling jewel that you have. Uh, and surprisingly, this uh, daughter of Naga, she just took uh, the, the wish for jewel from his crown and gave it to uh, King Indrabudi. So at the same time, the Buddha Amitabha, you know, he, from his heart, uh, you know, the golden Vajra, you know, you know the Vajra, the, the, what is it? Yeah, this, yes, perfect. This kind of golden Vajra with the seeds of a celebrant uh, she, you know, uh, that, you know, actually uh, come from his heart and then you know, flown over to the, to the lake of uh, Tanakosha in Odiyana. So from that lake, the the, the Danagosha Lake in Odiana, you know, there was a very colorful, gigantic lotus was you know born from this lake. Very unusual. And this lotus was being protected by all the birds around. So actually that lotus was the womb of Guru Muche. Uh, 
Because he exists, he was born in Oriana Lake with the miraculous birth, but not like us through the you know biological mother. While lotus was blooming, the in, king Interbuddhi was traveling uh, back to his country. With his team, a minister and all the, the captain and everybody, they and they successfully, you know, uh, returned to their country. Actually, I forgot to tell you, the king Interbuddhi did not have I too because he gave everything, and there was nothing left to give, and there was someone else for his eye, and he also gave his eye also. So he was blind, actually. I think one eye is blind. Then when they pass through the, the Danakosha Lake and uh, uh, they saw this, you know, uh, a lotus, a very special lotus being protected by all these birds. Then King Interbuddha asked his minister called Dinanzen, asked him to go and have a look what is happening there. And then King uh, no, the minister saw is like about like seven to eight years old boy sitting on the lotus. It was so beautiful and a very sharp eye, you know, who was holding a vajra, I don't know where he got it from. <laughs> he was holding a vajra and staring on them. And then he quickly reported this to King. There is, uh, you know, the, the about eight years old boy was born from this lotus, and this boy was protected by all these birds around. The king was so surprised. 那他就把这样的一个事情呢报告给这个国王，哦，跟他说，哦，有这样的一朵莲花，那上面有一个七到八岁的小男孩，那他旁边就呃有一群鸟在保护着他，那这个国王就非常觉得非常的奇怪。The king thought maybe this is a demon, maybe this is a human. I don't know, I have to go and uh, have a look. And then he decided to walk there and look at the boy. And then King asked the boy, Who is your father? Who is your mother? Uh, which cause, I mean, in India, the cause is very uh, serious thing. 
uh, which cause are you belong to, and which bit of you know uh, part of the village that you come from, blah blah. blah. He asked a few questions. In Tibetan words, it's very beautiful, but uh, I just say it in English. Yeah. Uh, uh, 因为在印度它是有阶级的然后它你是从哪里来的那其实人们现在表达是说它用这个文化的时候它们用藏语来问是非常美妙的但是你今天语言的关系它就是简单的用这个英语这样转过来转过来 Let me read for you this, uh, this place is actually translated to English I saw it in this book. So King asks, little boy child, who is your father and who is your mother? What is your caste and what is your country? What food do you live on and what is your purpose here? Yeah. So you understand, right? <laughs> So uh, this little child replied to the king as if he's a really grown up person. So he replied with this process. My father is the wisdom of spontaneous awareness. And my mother is the ever excellent lady, the space of all things. And I belong to the caste of indivisible space and awareness. And I have taken the unborn Dharma Dadu as my homeland. And I sustain myself by consuming the concept of uh, duality. And my purpose is the act of killing disturbing emotion. So <clears throat> with this response, so King was very amazed. He was shocked. And what kind of kid is this? Are you kidding? <笑>我们来看一下 他讲说我的父亲就是wisdom of spontaneous awareness 就是他是智慧的一个智者他的父亲 然后他说 my mother is the ever excellent lady 就是他是非常具足非常完美的一个女士 他说我是来自 the class of individual indivisible of space and awareness 就是我是属于这个虚空的一个阶势 还有这个awareness 就是我们的一个觉知者 I have take, undertaken the unborn Dharma that to as my homeland 就是我以这样的一个 佛法的一个国际,就是我的一个家乡。I sustain myself by, by consuming the concepts of duality,就是我以我的一个继续,就是不二的一个无我的一个方式来持续这样的一个修持。my purpose is an act of killing disturbing emotions. 我真正的一个目的呢，就是要啊，要杀，然后要抹杀，或者就是扼杀我的这个嗯不好的一个情绪啊，就是能控制我们自己的一个情绪啊，这个是我主要的一个目的啊，我是大大致上就是这样。And then. King was thinking, and the king and ministers were thinking, oh, maybe I should adopt these kids. As a, you know, since he doesn't have a father and mother in, in, in this realistic world, like a biological father and mother. 
this could be uh, my boy. You know, he taught these things, but he wasn't sure. He was a little bit doubtful. You know, he was kind of uh, suspicious about this little boy. And then he met, uh, he took out his uh, uh, wish fulfilling jewel. And he prayed a wish fulfilling jewel. If this wish fulfilling jewel has the power, and if it is the true wish fulfilling jewel, this boy be seated on the throne of you know uh, my palace. You know he just pray, prayed, and the somehow uh, it responds to the king's you know desire, and the king and minister decided to invite uh, the boy to the palace, and uh, and also this little boy also you know agreed to come with. And then they invite him with the, you know, then first they put uh, like a, a silky uh, cloth to the Guru Mbache and they invite to the palace. Inviting him to the palace. Uh 可能请回去一个王位就是披上这个小孩子,就是当时他们称他为莲花生大师。So after inviting eight years old boy to the palace of uh, uh, King Odi, Yan, uh, King Indrabodhi, King thought, okay, I need to give him a name. So King was thinking, what should I give name to him? So King decided to name him Abhatma Sambhava, meaning the lotus born. So this is the reason why the Guru Mbushi names, you know, uh, goes after he, the history, the story of uh, his birth, Padma Sambhava. Padma in Sanskrit is a lotus. Padma uh, Sambhava means coming form or arise or emerge or something like that. So this is the reason why the Guru Mucha name is Padma Sambhava. In Tibetan, we call Padma Jungne. Padma is a lotus. Jungne is coming and staying. You know, or the origin of or the source. You know, so meaning that coming from a lotus. So we call it Padma Jungne. So this is the reason why we call him Guru Padma Sambhava or Tibetan 
呃，三包瓦的，就是说呃，它的一个缘起，所以说呃，他们也称它为呃 k e n a j u n e k e n a j u n e 就是呃棉花的一个呃呃，从棉花出来的一个呃最终的一个呃个体。Then, of course, the king also announced with the name of the prince to his in you know, the public, and they uh, they had to organize a party. So the problem was. The king was poor now. The problem is because his treasury stores、uh, stores are all empty, and、uh, there's nothing left. So, what he did was again he prayed this uh, this uh, wish fulfilling jewel. If this wish fulfilling jewel is the real and true and powerful jewel,、uh, may my treasury storage will be you know、uh, continuously、uh, you know filled up. As it were, he said that, and surprisingly, miraculously, it was filled up, and he became、uh, as rich as his、uh, first、uh, time, the previous time. 那当时候他们要做这样的一个庆祝会的时候，啊，国王就觉得，哦，他现在一无啊分文了，身无分文了，已经非常穷了，他不知道要怎样去。做这样一个庆祝会，那他想到这样的呃，他的这个呃许愿的这个宝呃珍宝，啊，他就啊埋怨，就是呃向他祈求，啊，希望他能恢复他之前的这个啊珍宝所有的一些财物啊，希望他呃所有的这个啊皇宫啊把把他原来的财富能恢复给他。啊，结果呢？啊，他已经啊，如他所愿，啊，这个满月的这个珠宝呢，就把他的月，啊，他成为又有钱的国王。So King Indrabudri thought, since I'm old, I should enthrone him as soon as possible. So he decided to, you know, enthrone、uh, Padmasambhava, the child Padmasambhava, as the king of Odiana. So they enthrone him. Uh, as Guru Ramachi as the king of the Odiana. 那呃，国王也觉得说，他年纪已经大了，他应该把这个王位呢，啊，传给这个帕玛森爸爸，就是莲花生大师。那当时候就是啊，这样有这样的一个气场啊，结果呃，这个帕玛森爸爸就呃，莲花生大师就成了这个乌金的这个王了。嗯。Then he gave, you know. Uh, all the beggars and、uh, whoever needs, whatever needs, he gave everything, and everybody returned. And the Bhagma Sambhava、uh, was there for a couple of years.、Uh, I think a couple of years or a couple of months. I think a couple of years. He lived in this palace as a king, with his father and mother, father and mothers. <laughs> Asian king had a lot of wife, like. He says, "Hundred and eight wives." He had hundred and eight wives. Yeah, he was very rich. <laughs> Not only a,、uh, uh, you know, other wealth, but only wife he had hundred and eight. 那后来呃，这个呃，这个国王就把这个王位传给了这个莲花生大师之后呢，啊、呃，他也把呃，就是布施啊、呃，给那些来乞讨的这些乞丐。那就把他们遣散回去了。那过了几年后呢？啊，他就是要退休。啊，这个国王当时候也是有啊非常多的太太。那说后来这个莲花生大师，他不止有了父亲，他有也有非常多的母亲。啊，也有一百零八位母亲。Yeah, so <coughs> if it Is with our kind of like by、uh, English year, so they counted perhaps around like seventh century. 
。那呃，如果以这个呃公历来算，它是算在七世纪的时候。It was twelve years after、uh, Buddha entered into Parinibbana. 它是在呃十二年啊之后啊。Now, this is not only a Tibetan Buddhist or Tibetan teachers believe. Actually, it was Buddha himself, Shakyamuni Buddha himself, precisely prophesied and predicted in the Sutra of Nirvana. Now, this is not only a Tibetan Buddhist or Tibetan teachers believe. 一个事件，呃，其实在，在呃，呃，是释迦牟尼佛的一个呃记载当中，他也曾经讲过，这是真实的一个事情。涅盘经。涅盘经。啊。In Kushinagar in India, Buddha was about to、uh, pass away, and And Ananda and his attendants and various other devotees and close disciples were so sad and grieving and kind of as a mourning and crying in front of Buddha. He was about to pass away. That in the Buddha, to pass away, is in the Kushinagar temple. He had many devotees in front of him. He was about to pass away. 围绕着他啊，在哭泣。当时候，佛要进入涅槃的时候。Then Buddha said to them, "Don't worry. You know there will be a person who is greater than me who will be born after my, you know,、uh, entering into Pari Nibbana." 那呃，佛陀就是啊，跟他们说，哦，你们不需要担心，哦，你不需要悲伤。会有一个呃，比我还呃殊胜的一个人会出世，然后呃呃会来就是呃呃传递这样的一个佛法。And then the Ananda and disciple, close disciple of Buddha, thought, how could that be possible? Someone who is greater than Lord Buddha yourself, you must be, you know, a、uh, kind of a、uh, uh, how to say this one word.、Uh, Counsel, yeah, counseling us, and it is almost impossible for us to imagine that there will be someone who is greater than you. And then Buddha said, "No." 那呃，当时候他的弟子哦，像啊阿难阿难陀尊者啊舍利弗尊者，他们觉得这个是不可能的，怎么会有这样的一个伟大的圣人会比佛陀更殊胜呢？ Then Buddha said, "Yes, this will, this uh, uh, master will be greater than me because he was born as a miracle of birth, and also he will tame those you know、uh, untamable beings、uh, in this planet, and also he will protect this you know、uh, beings in this planet from the rakshas." And then he. You know, say those places here. I will read for you later. The Buddha said, "Uh, indeed, there will be such a person. 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 There will be such a Then Buddha said, "Twelve years after I passed into Nirvana, a person who is superior to everyone will appear from the anders of a lotus flower in the immaculate lake Gosha." On the northern west border of the country of Udiyana, so this was the original word of Buddha himself, which is、uh, which was、uh, written in the Sutra of Nirvana. Buddha just about to pass away, he he said some sutra. 
in this sutra. So sutras are being accepted by not only Tibetans, Mahayana, Hinayana, Zen Buddhism, whichever group of uh, Buddhists, you know, they, sh uh, they all you know, accept this, those sutras because the words of the Buddha. So actually existence of Guru Pema Sambhava is not only a Tibetan, but it is written in the sutra. There should be, you know, every Buddhist should accept. And yeah, it's partly it's accepted too. Chan 而且相信這個蓮花生大師就是所所指的這個人,所以這個是有根據的,所以我們應該也要接受這樣的一個事事情。So basically the the Guru Mochi was uh we we Tibetan, we call it second Buddha Pema Sambhava, which means that the uh the first Buddha was uh uh, not to within the 1,000 Buddha, but within the Shakyamuni, the Buddha's uh, uh, you know, teaching era, uh, the first was uh, Shakyamuni Buddha. And then once Shakyamuni Buddha passed away, we call it second Buddha as a Guru Rinpoche, as a Sanji Nipa, uh, second Buddha, Padmasambhava. So because he is the emanation of the Buddha himself, and uh, it was also precisely you know, prophesied and uh, predicted by the Shachamuni Buddha himself. Not only the Sutra of uh, Nirvana, but there is uh, the prediction uh, of prophecies about Guru Rinpoche in other sutras as well. You know, uh, Sutra of uh, uh, Langar Shekpa and, and also, you know, certain Tantras. So, uh, this Lianhua Sen Da Si's in 佛，它也是呃，在经非常多的一个经典里面都有这样的一个记载，所以这个是呃呃，不是一个捏造的一个一个佛。So this is the how Guru Pema Samba was born in this world. You know, no father, no mother. He was born from the lotus. That's what we call it, lotus-born master or Padma Sambhava in Sanskrit. In Tibetan, we call it Guru Padma Jone. So this is the story of the Lianhua Shen Da Shi that was born in the world. It was born from the Lianhua Shen Da Shi. So it was called the Lianhua Shen Da Shi. 那他们的西藏有一个另外一个尊称就是佩玛姑娘佩玛姑娘佩玛姑娘 Is that clear to you? 你们有什么问题吗? 并且我们的声音 OK, so uh, Sometimes, like, you know, when we talk about Buddha Amitabha and our Lankateshwara, this is how they connected with the Guru Mahajan's life, blah, blah, blah. Sometimes it's very much sounded like a myth, you know, the, the, the kind of a, like a fairy tale or something. But actually, it was real. Yeah. Guru Mahajan had to born 
as a miraculous birth. But that has to be originated from somewhere else. So this was from Amitabha with this three mission. There's a little more time, so let us move a little further down, yeah? So, after that, then the Guru Muchi stayed in this palace for a while, and then he thought, well, actually, there's no really interesting to live in this palace anymore. So he thought it is a meaningless to live in this fancy palace just to gratify this old man and others, some other women. <laughs> I want to do much more than this, and I want to free myself from this, you know, uh, palace. So he decided to leave the palace, but he did not know how to begin, you know. So he had to make excuses. So he turned it to like more like a yogic sort of a uh, lifestyle, you know. So every now and then he walked to the, the roof of the uh, palace and he took out all his you know, king's royals dress out. He was naked and he put some jewels on here, here, here. And uh, he played with this, you know, what do you call it, katanga? Is uh, uh, I mean these things kind of a, we what do you call it? we call it katanga yeah uh, this kind of a, kind of like a dagger or something big dagger Trident. yeah something like that he just you know play 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 with this you know the king was wondering what was he doing you know <laughs> and he asked what are you doing he said I'm dancing I'm dancing with the uh, daginis he said I'm dancing. 那他当时就想要成为好像瑜伽式的一个修作法 and then the king asks him, Who are the Daginis? And then he says, uh, the, the, the beings who dwells in the sky, the sky walker.
So surprisingly, some intangible beings appear to dance with him uh, in front of the, the naked eye of this King Indrabuddhi. So he was so astonished. Did you really, there were some women, colorful women, dancing with this boy. And these women are kind of like untangible. You know, it's, it's ungrabbable. But it, they are look as real as just like a human you know, beings. It's so beautiful and so like, uh, how to say, well ornamented and it's such a beautiful uh, women. Then somehow his, you know, the, the steps of his dance was very inspiring and it became very impressive towards the king and the retinue of the king. And eventually those ministers also came to, you know, uh, look at his dance on the roof of the palace. Probably his dance was even much better, or maybe a hundred times better than Michael Jackson dance. <laughs> So as the day goes, there were more spectators uh, on the palace, and then one day, uh, I forgot the name of the, the minister. There's one minister, and he brought, uh, he brought his son along to watch the prince, uh, you know, the Padmasambhava's dance on the roof of the palace. Then all of a sudden, he pretend to drop his dagger and, you know, just thrown over the, the son of the minister. So what happened was the minister's son was killed on the spot. Now he's in the crime. And then the ministers assemble and they discuss and then they you know, report the king that you know uh, the the king Pema Sambo should be punished because he you know involved this crime. He killed the, the son of the uh, minister. So, the base on his uh, kind of uh, this killing involved, and uh, the king also, you know, responded to the minister. Yeah, I think uh, he deserved it because he brought the uh, law. And uh, then the ministers, you know, decided to, uh, you know, get him away from the palace, exile. 
。那当时候国王也啊、呃、无可奈何，因为他他只是犯法了嘛，那犯法了他必须要接受这样的一个惩罚。那这些臣子们就觉得说应该把他啊、呃、逐出啊宫宫外。And then the king was very sad because、uh, he had no choice because there must have all made mistakes. And now ministers are telling him to, you know, to punish, and the king had to say yes. But inside, he was very, very sad. He couldn't sleep. And then, you know,、uh, so the next day, Padma Sambhava himself walked into his father's room, and bowed to them, and then told them that、uh, I will leave the palace. And there's no worry, you know. Please don't worry about me. I'll be all right all the time. And、uh, we will meet again based on our、uh, karmic connection. He just said all these kind of things, and then he asks,、uh, you know,、uh, his attendants to prepare the the horse. That 当时候国王呢就非常的呃伤心。那莲花生大师也就是劝他说，啊，这个就是呃可能我们的一个缘分。那有缘，我们还是会再见的。那国王就呃叫他的侍臣啊，为呃莲花生大师就准备那些马匹啊。So what happened was the ministers, you know, decided to put him in a very difficult place as a punishment, not just to you know exile or as you know just get him get rid of the palace, but They want to put Padma Sambhava in a very difficult place as a punishment. That these ministers, they think that this is not fair. They think that they should be punished with more severe punishment. So they decided to put him in a very difficult place as a punishment. They think that they should be punished with more severe punishment. So they decided to put him in a very difficult place as a punishment. So the, the eastern direction of the Odiana city, there is a dense forest. In the middle of the dense forest, there is called a、uh, uh, charnel ground, which is a cemetery. Very scary place. Of course, there was no human right organization. Otherwise, he can do something, but unfortunately, not. So he had to face、uh, these challenges. And the minister, you know, unclothed him at the channel ground, and then left him there, without food, and just at the cemetery. Yeah,、uh, 还是要觉得要用一些呃方法啊、哦，一个行段要来处罚他，那就把他丢弃在这个地方。So this bad reputation was spread throughout the nation in Odiana. Oh, the king killed the minister's son, blah blah blah, these things, and he was not able to return to the village, so he had to stay in this forest. 那因为这样的一个事件呢，说呃，这个传闻呢，就全呃传到全国，所以这个呃林焕生大师他没有办法再回到这个呃乌金察府。So, but he had to eat something, and he need to put some cloth on him, right? So, based on this, you know,、uh, particular city's you know tradition. When they send, you know, crops to the cemetery, they wrap it,、uh, you know, they wrap the crops with the, you know, white cotton、uh, cloth, and put a little bit of uh, uh, rice, you know, sort of cooked rice, 
as a kind of a, it represents the food to this the dead person, to the cemetery. <coughs> But Bema Sambawa is a miracle being. Actually, he can manifest in any form as this age. But he show it, display this kind of activities in order to kind of civilize himself in this, you know, human's realm. And, and also to uh, create uh, you know, paths towards you know, upcoming uh, his disciples. So what he did was he unclothed these crops and he put on you know, all these uh, white cottons on his, his body and he ate all the, the rice that are you know, put on the crop's mouth. He took out and eat those as his food. He survived there. And then at night, he was surrounded by again a lot of a, a kind of a Duganese, uh, uh, kind of a very beautiful, you know, colorful, you know, intangible, more like a divine uh, beings. You know, I think I would say divine, or maybe it's a kind of a kind of an alien anyway that was surrounded by him, and he was well entertained. <laughs> Uh 就是說好像圍繞著他在跳舞啊之類的所以就好像<笑><笑> And this certain period of time, what happened was there was again like a crisis happened in the country, you know, um, the food crisis. And, uh, you know, the people have, you know, um, a lot of people die. And they sent you know, those crops to the channel ground without rope because they are be everybody's become poor already. And they have no effort to put the rice in the crop's mouth because there are not enough food for themselves too. So when somebody died, they just you know throw the channel ground. So what happened was uh, he ate the the crops. Yeah, this boy now he is turning into a demon. Crops. 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 Yeah, crops. Dead, yeah, crops. dead body. A dead body. So, um, 当时候就是他们国家有这样的一个危机And then, uh, of course, from the ordinary point of view, I think he's eating uh, crops and uh, he's wearing all these kind of things, killing him Bob, so many things. But ultimately, uh, he's liberating all of them and uh, he's playing his role very well. But from the ordinary you know, point of view, it's kind of like a wrong, uh, kind of demonish sort of uh, activities. And then in the end, what happened was there was, uh, uh, again, there was uh, uh, one place, there's one minister who has a lot of power. And uh, he let 
all his people to do a lot of uh, kind of like unrighteousness things, uh, such as involving killing and a lot, a lot of you know, uh, like uh, <clears throat> uh, kind of like uh, what's the right words? Anyway, a lot of wrongdoing. So nobody was able to challenge this, you know, a powerful man in this uh, area. So, uh, Pema Sambo was decided to go there to kill him again. So he was kind of like a Taliban. So he tie up, now he tie up, but he's, he's very beautiful, you know, hair with a well ornamented, now turned into a very, like, a, kind of, what do you call it, this one? Curly. Curly. And he tied up on the top of here, and uh, then he wear this corpse, you know, like broken clothes, and he went with his dagger to this place, and then he just killed this man. And everybody thought that he is a demon because he eats a human's flesh, dead body, and now he killed somebody who is very well known in this place. This very powerful man is being killed by this uh, man from. Uh, a crazy man from a China ground. So his reputation was completely ruined down from the king, become a very, very bad now. A lot of bad reputation. Tanko 就是不好的事情他想要去做这样的一个事情就好像他要是一个很恶的人这样然后就要决定去把这个大官员把他杀掉那就因为这样真的把他杀掉他的名声又更加的坏就好像说这个明华生大师是一个很恶的一个人 only to uh, tame those uh, you know, very uh, ferocious guy leaders, but on the other side, other hand, he also tamed a lot of, uh, you know, bad and harmful spirits, and, uh, you know, he did a lot of uh, fighting. So, in the first, he became a very uh, expert dancer, and then now he became a very uh, good fighter. <laughs> so, the queens of the Dagini called Vajra Warahi, and named him a Vajra Rat meaning the, uh, it's the wrathful, you know, version of Guru Mache, Vajra Rath. So that's why we call it uh, Guru Dabo or Guru uh, uh, Tertensel. That means he was wearing a mala, a garland of uh, human skull, and he ornamented himself with a human bone everywhere, and uh, here, 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 everywhere, human skulls uh, use as kind of like uh, these things. So, Vajrawara, he named him a Vajra Rath. So that is the part that Guru Maharaj escaped from the palace 
to the channel ground, the cool channel ground, we call it. See what's up. Yeah. 这些不好的行为他虽然杀了很多人降服了一些不好的这些大恶的这些鬼神啊恶魔所以这个空心母呢就给这个莲花生大使一个称号叫做 so there is a more interesting, you know, life story that's left behind. So we don't have uh, time, only two minutes left. So I think we should, you know, pause here today. And the next chapter, you know, like uh, when the Guru Mahesh become a monk, and he, uh, you know, he received teachings from his teachers, and then eventually how he traveled to Tibet, and, you know, uh, propagated the Bajra and Buddhism in yeah, so this will come for the next couple of days. So today we just stop here. Yeah.